Coming up, why it is important not to let corals grow too much in a reef tank. Hello everybody, this is Keith Burkelhammer and I am once again collaborating with Marine Depot on an educational video about reef keeping. Okay, so is too much coral growth a problem? Well, actually, yes it is. So what you're looking at here is footage of my 187 gallon SPS dominated reef tank. And yes, I do have some really good coral growth. It looks great, but the more coral growth you have, the more impedes the circulation in the tank. And circulation is really important to have a successful SPS dominant reef tank. Why is it important? Well, one, circulation helps to keep detritus suspended off the bottom of the tank. You wanna be able to you know, get that detritus um, up off the bottom into the water column so you can have the uh, mechanical filtration, um, you know, filter sucks, help remove the, uh, the detritus. Also, circulation helps deliver nutrients to corals. So this will um, certainly benefit the corals in terms of them you know, getting the nutrition that they need with those nutrients. The third benefit with having strong circulation as a tank is that you will get good surface agitation. And why is this good? Well, one, it increases oxygen levels and it also replicates light refraction that occurs in our natural reefs. And a fourth reason why strong circulation or flow is important in a reef tank is it does help problematic algae from taking hold. You know, and that's also part of why it's important to keep the uh, detritus suspended, keep the uh, nutrients down, and keep those nitrates and phosphates low. So what I'm gonna do is take you through some of the things that I did to help improve the circulation in this reef tank. And the right side of the tank, you can see this Tyree Red Dragon and this ATL Forest Fire Digi. Those things just really have overgrown each other and the other corals in the area. So what I wanted to do was to remove those pieces. You can see this um, recession, um, little RTN going on in that coral. This is a tub stiletta montipora that's behind those two corals that was pretty much up against the back of the glass. So I went in and I just removed this ATL forest fire digi. It was huge. I was lucky to be able to grab it and remove it in one piece. And you know, as I bring it up out of the tank, you could see the, uh, the dead coral skeletons at the bottom there. And that's just a result of like th that part of the coral not having good circulation. And now I'm removing the, uh, the, the Tyree Red Dragon. The ATL Forest Fire Digi I did not put back in the tank. It just grows too aggressively. So I did take a big chunk of the Tyree Red Dragon and put it back in that spot. So that um, certainly freed up more room on that side. And then I broke off the Tub Stiletta Monty that was butting up against the back of the tank. So really removed a lot of coral in that section of the tank. And as you can see, now I have a lot of space um, between that coral and the wall. What I did was I put a, an MP40, another MP40. So now the tank has three MP40s and that one going across the bottom to again, increase the circulation. I also fragged some pieces in the middle part of the tank, but I was really focusing on the right side and this left side of the tank. And there's a big tub stiletta, Montipora colony, just a huge colony. And I um, wanted to break off about a third of that colony. And I started to do that. It just grows really aggressively for me in the tank. So I had to do some pruning and chop off some pieces to remove that coral. And, and there's a recordia below that, so it opened up light for that coral below it. And again, it just helped improve the circulation in this tank. I also had another big Tyree Red Dragon that I removed, and luckily it came off in one big chunk. And I've got this uh, purple slammer that's in front of it. I love that coral, so I wanted to increase the flow to that coral. You know, again, I put a small piece of that Tyree Red Dragon back in there, but I'm sure it's gonna grow back quickly. It's an aggressive coral for me in this tank. So again, there's a, a picture of the left side of the tank and certainly a lot more room for that um, purple uh, Slimer coral. And here's a shot of the, uh, the left side before I started doing all the pruning. So that really is, uh, in a nutshell, the, the major work that I did on the tank. This is the, uh, the after shot that you're looking at here. I certainly have more pruning to go. As you can see, there's certainly a lot of corals on the, uh, on the right side of the tank that are um, you know, still kind of growing on top of one another. I've got a lot of zoas in there that have grown aggressively. And even on the left side, I've got some, some other corals that are growing on top of one another. So more work to be done. 
But again, just to kind of sum it up, I really think it's important to have strong circulation in an SPS dominant reef tank. If you don't stay on top of that stuff, then it's just gonna to lead to problems down the road. So even though the tank looks great, it is really important to, uh, to do something that might seem uh, detrimental at the time, but in, in the long run, it's gonna really help you out because there's just so many reasons why circulation is gonna be beneficial to the help of SPS. Well, that will do it for this video. I will leave links for Reef Bum and Marine Depot in the video description below. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button to be alerted to all the latest videos. And until next time, be safe, be well.